Let's get this out of the way. If you're still asking what's the best web dev stack? Hoping for one magic answer. You're already behind. Because in 2026, the problem isn't too many tools. The problem is developers choosing stacks without understanding why they exist. So this video isn't a tool list. It's a reality check on what actually works in production in 2026, based on performance, cost, hiring trends, and real adoption. As of late 2025 going into 2026, web development has officially changed shape. Three things matter now. First, TypeScript is not optional. If your stack is JavaScript only, you're building legacy software in real time. Second, edge computing one. Cold starts, bloated node servers, and massive AWS bills are out. Low latency edge functions are in. Third, frameworks are full stack now. Front-end and back-end are no longer separate jobs. They're different rendering strategies inside the same code base. If your stack doesn't respect those three realities, it's already outdated. Stack 1, the startup or MVP stack. This is what most people should be using, but somehow still aren't. Front-end, next.js. App router, React server components, back-end, edge functions, database, Postgres or MySQL with Drizzle, styling, tailwind, not because it's trendy but because it scales, hosting, Versal or Cloudflare. Why this works in 2026, you get server rendering, streaming, caching, and APIs in one place. Drizzle beats Prisma here for one reason, zero runtime overhead. When you're deploying to the edge, that matters. This stack ships fast, scales reasonably, and doesn't bankrupt you at 10,000 users. And yes, most funded startups are using some variation of this, whether people want to admit it or not. Stack 2, the enterprise stack. This is for teams that actually care about structure, not vibe. Coding, front-end quick or astro. UI layer, react where needed, not everywhere. Back-end, Nest.js or Hano. Database, PostgreSQL. Caching, Redis at the edge. Tooling, NX or TurboRepo. Here's the key idea. You minimize JavaScript by default. You hydrate only what's interactive. You treat the browser like a delivery system not a runtime for your entire app. Quick and Astro exist because shipping less JavaScript wins. Period. This stack is boring, and that's exactly why enterprises trust it. Stack 3, the performance-first stack. This is for SEO, e-commerce, and low-bandwidth markets. Framework, Astro, rendering. Mostly static HTML, navigation, native view transitions, images, a VIF and JPEG XL, analytics, Privacy first, lightweight. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Most websites do not need React hydration. They need fast HTML and good caching. Astro embraces that reality instead of fighting it. If your goal is lighthouse scores, search rankings, and real users, this stack quietly destroys everything else. Let's be honest. Create React app is dead. Express alone is a liability. MongoDB is losing ground for transactional apps. Angular is surviving on inertia not momentum. If your stack hasn't evolved since 2019, you're maintaining, not engineering. Here's the part nobody wants to. Here, stacks change. Foundations don't. If you want to be relevant in 2026, focus on how rendering actually works, when to use server versus client, how databases scale, how caching saves money, how edge limits force better architecture. Tools are temporary. Understanding is permanent. There is no best stack, but there is a best stack for your constraints. If you're building fast, use next.js and edge. If you're building big, use structure and minimal JS. If you care about performance, ship HTML, not frameworks. And if you're still collecting certificates instead of learning how the web actually works, the stack isn't your problem. 